perfection of taxation such as ever home in America. Cutting through the static of the tax world, it's Simply Tax. Brought to you by BKD CPAs and Advisors. Everyone needs a trusted advisor. Who's yours? Now here's your host, Damian Martin. Hello and welcome to Simply Tax. Around this time last October, I had the transformative opportunity to join 40 of my fellow CPAs from both public accounting and private industry to attend the 2018 AICPA Leadership Academy. This four-day interactive leadership program led by Tom Hood and Gretchen Pisano included presentations from some of the profession's top thought leaders and challenged us in a self-examination of leadership, what leadership means, and how it impacts our personal life, career path, and the CPA profession. It's on the heels of the completion of the 11th Leadership Academy today, October 10th, 2019, and I'm excited to continue our Working in Tax series on the podcast and share with you a conversation I had with fellow alum, podcast host, and friend, Tim Jipping of Journey Advisors and CPAs. In the episode, we dig deep on the positive change and impact that the AICPA Leadership Academy has had on us, Tim's journey that led him to start a podcast in his own CPA firm, my journey that led me from California to Chicago and to start the Simply Tax podcast the importance of creativity and innovation, and much more, with a few fun detours and sidebars along the way. I really enjoyed the conversation you're about to hear, which, by the way, you can get a behind-the-scenes look at on our Simply Tax YouTube channel. But I have to admit and come clean about something before you hear it, and that's that I really struggled with putting it together. I think in part because in the last month or so in particular, I really haven't been as intentional about taking action on the ideas that we discuss as I'd like to think. To be honest, I almost feel like kind of a fraud because I really need to learn from and take Tim's and my own advice to heart. But I suppose that's the best part about being on a journey. You can always make changes and improve your path along the way. The goal of this episode is to provide you with information to help you on your journey, whether it's as a CPA, a business advisor, an executive, or whatever it might be. And much like I shared in episode 63 with guest Amy Kuntz, where we discussed working as a CPA in public accounting versus industry, there's no one size fits all or most journey, and you're going to need to find your own path. So let's jump into the conversation by learning more about Tim's path. Come on! I've worked as a CPA for my whole career, spent time in public practice, and um, I, I guess going back a little further, I did do improv. We talked about that uh a little bit before and I've done theater and other performing arts stuff and uh, somehow landed my way into accounting. Doesn't quite make a whole lot of sense. I was actually going to go out to New York City, become an actor. That was what really? I wanted to do. Yep. Uh, auditioned, got in where I wanted to. Everything was lined up and for whatever reason, just couldn't pull the trigger at the end. Um, didn't love it enough, wasn't convinced that uh, I wanted that lifestyle. And so I just proceeded to go to college where my friends were going to college, thought I'd go into business and, you know, kind of the typical story of accounting, at least the way I see it is you take some of your first accounting classes and you either like it or you hate it. And those who like it tend to go into it. Yeah. Um, or, Or you have a family member or a close friend that you know is in the industry. And that's sort of how you get into it. My dad is a CPA. I took some accounting courses, enjoyed them and just pursued it. Yeah. So the background a little bit leads into how I ended up ultimately doing a podcast, you know, 12, 13 years later, ultimately left big practice to go just on my own and start my own firm in in my own image, I guess, yeah. um, looking back on it. But over the years working in in public practice and just doing life, yeah. right? You just sort of get in grooves. You're early on, especially, you're, you're learning a lot. You're being challenged. You're experiencing new things. You're meeting new people. Uh, it's great. Uh, it's a great experience. It's a great education. Looking back, I, I will look at it as a extension of my formal education, Mm -hmm. because I think it's just as valuable as anything I had leading up to that, right? I mean, every every piece of it's important, but it's just a great education. And then, you know what, 10 years pass by, and I'm married, and a couple kids, and got the mortgage, and have obligations, making more money, you know, I mean, 
kind of doing everything that you're supposed to do and climbing the the corporate ladder and something just, you know, it's always felt like it was missing and I never could put my finger on it. Life was good. Everything was good. Right. Uh, going through the firm that I worked at at the time uh, put me through some coaching and some leadership. I was interested in leadership. I was interested in doing a lot of different things around the firm uh, as well as serving clients. And uh, they, they observed, and I think I even shared with them a little bit of, yeah, I just, you know, I love it. And I love the people I work with. I love what I do. I love the firm, believe in it, but there's just something missing. Like there's just uh, not all the way in. Yeah. And so they set me up with a organizational psychologist, I took a bunch of tests. He told me I should be a life insurance agent or a chef, right? It didn't quite make sense to me, but a hmm. uh, life insurance agent cooking or chef. Cooking up some life insurance. There you maybe. go. I don't know. Yeah, uh, cooking uh, the books. Or, cooking the books. Yeah. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> so um, one thing that he observed was that I had had a lot of creativity coursing through my veins for many years and then seemingly went to nothing which was fine because there was, you know, I was busy learning and busy growing and experiencing new things that sort of occupied that. Getting married, having a child, buying a home, doing all of those things kind of kept me filled in certain ways, but then kind of get into this almost autopilot mode and mm. it felt a little bit too comfortable. Yeah. And maybe that in hindsight was what, what scared me a bit. And so he recommended that I get into some more creative endeavors. What sort of hobbies do you like? et cetera, et cetera. It kind of touched on some things I learned during the AICPA's Leadership Academy, which I'm sure we'll talk about a bit. Yeah. But I thought, yeah, you know what? You're right. I, I need to find something to serve as an outlet for this creativity that I'd been missing. And so I started cooking more. I enjoyed that. And I happened to be listening to a Tim Ferriss podcast where his episode was about how you do a podcast and told us all the equipment that he used, kind of how he approached it. And I thought, you know what, why don't I just give that a shot? I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure I'll learn a lot. I enjoy that. I'm sure I'll be challenged, stretched, learning new skills. Um, and it might even be fun. And so that's what I did. How was that like experience of, I mean, it's a little bit of a leap, right? To go out and start a podcast or oh, yeah. do something different that's, that hasn't been done before. I mean, obviously podcasts have been done before. I mean, you were listening to a podcast, right? Yeah. But you know, what was it like for you to make that leap? It was uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a certain aspect of it that's exciting. And that excitement is what kind of keeps you going. And then I, I think maybe looking back upon the career, like early on, like things are just exciting. New things are exciting. Challenges are exciting. And that excitement sort of keeps you holding on. And so, yeah, it was, it was also terrifying because other than sitting in maybe a room with a client, asking them questions, I've never interviewed anybody. I'm not a journalist. I don't know how to ask questions. I do listen to a lot of podcasts. And so the actual conducting an interview was was something that I was uncomfortable with. So it was a challenge. I read up on it. I listened to how good good podcasters do it. Uh, did my research on people who you know were willing to sit down with me. And uh, fortunately, it was still, it, well, it wasn't that long ago, but it was at a time when anyone I asked who I thought was interesting and had this really cool story or, or some part of their journey that I thought we could learn something from, or at least just find entertaining. They would say, yes, we do it. And kind of snowballed from there. And then that led into ultimately being the catalyst for me venturing out on my own and trying to build a practice, build a firm, do something a little bit different, kind of exercise that creativity and that desire to build more. Yeah. I always think of the, the creativity and the use of creativity as, you know, like the theater, the, the acting, the, mm -hmm. well, like in my case, like music, performance. right? Performance or like you're going to do a, a piece of art. I don't know. Right now I have the image of Art Institute, modern art, you know, sort of this, this like mural that's like one solid color or something. And you're like, how, how did my four-year-old not do that? Yeah, you know? And then right. why is that in this museum? But I mean, it's, you know, create, so you're creative, you know, juices, yeah. but then there's also the creating part, right? You actually are yes. creating something. So like in the first 10 years you're talking about, you're creating a career, you're creating a knowledge base, you're creating a family, uh, exactly. all those things, right? And yeah. then it sounds like you kind of got to a spot where it's like, well, I'm not necessarily creating. So you turn to the creative to, to do that, which is right. interesting. It, yeah. it, it served as an outlet. 
It yeah. served as a, a you know, a creative accountants, <laughs> creative yeah. uh, tax professionals, creative financial professionals, uh, that's not a good combination of words, right? right? We hear that and we think, okay, well, if you're doing something creatively, it's very likely illegal or, or not right. Right. But um, right. <laughs> So we don't get to exercise it as much unless we're intentional about it, yeah. unless we kind of know, or we just sort of luck into it. Yeah. We just kind of happen to fall into a role that that fills the buckets we need to be filled. And, and not everyone needs you know that same level, but I, I think we were all created to create at some level. And yeah. sometimes that's building. Sometimes it's coming up with just these crazy ideas, you know, the Elon Musk's of, you know, the transformational ideas. Sometimes it's just doing something a little bit different. Sometimes it's just building something from scratch. Right. Or building upon something that exists. I mean, you can exercise it in so many ways, but that was a way I chose. I mean, cooking was very similar. Yeah, I mean, right. cooking is this, this process where you take ingredients, these raw materials, and you put them together in a certain way. And while you're doing that, things won't always go as planned. And so you have to adjust and modify along the way. And you end up with something that you maybe had a vision of, but it may not be entirely like what you were expecting, but it's still altogether creative and beautiful. And well, and I think that's kind of how creativity sort of like materializes in accounting, right? Or as, as being a CPA is it's it's existing things and you're maybe sort of combining them in new and unique ways. Or maybe that's what innovation is. I think and maybe it was even Tom Hood who, like you said, we'll talk about as we we start talking through some of the, the ASCPA Leadership Academy because yeah. I want to make sure to touch on that because that was such a an awesome experience for me. I know from the conversations we've had that it was obviously pretty transformative for you too. But, um, you know, I think it was Tom that said that, you know, like a lot of the ideas – the great ideas have already happened. They're out there. It's but what's truly innovative is, is putting them together in exactly. unique and new ways. And that's kind yeah. of what you've done in a way, right? You know, building your own firm, right? That's that's a piece of you in the way that you would want the want the firm to work. Right. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. Um on the the creative side. Sometimes we uh we we use the word interchangeably um with discovery. Yeah. Right. We discover something like I I didn't create a podcast. I create. I had an idea, and then kind of brought these materials together to bring something to life. Yeah, um, and it just happened to be something with a title, with a description, with words, with sound, and kind of came together, and it became a, what we know as a podcast. Yeah, right. But the podcast itself always existed too. Just people weren't doing it. They hadn't discovered that you take a few elements, you put them together like this, and it might be. Uh, impactful. So cooking the podcast, cooking the podcast. Yeah. yeah. I was actually, it was funny uh, this morning. I was talking with a couple of guys who work in the insurance insurance and chef field. and life insurance. Huh? Yeah. I know. I just, just, like, maybe maybe you should have we been were, one of those things. We were at a restaurant where there was food and there was life insurance. So there, they were uh, talking insurance and, and making some jokes in, in and amongst themselves, which only they understood of course, inside jokes. And I said, you guys should start a podcast for your, for your own kind. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they said, yeah, uh, we'll just call it, um, that's not covered. <laughs> so that's I thought actually, that was a great, that's, yeah, that's I'm like, man, you thought yeah. of this before, yeah, they're, haven't they're, you? They're, they're, they're like, they've already, you know, got 10 episodes yeah. recorded. They're, you know, they're just waiting for so, to be discovered. On the, on the topic of creativity, you are doing something that I shared with you earlier that I think is innovative. And we can talk about innovative and in kind of these different words, but you're doing something that isn't that common, and maybe it's becoming more and more common. You're kind of forging a new path, taking, again, some existing technology, some models, mashing them up into the world of tax within a, you know, one of the nation's premier firms. There's an element of creativity in there. How do you experience it, or how, how does this serve as an outlet for you? When I meet people that I don't know, and I, and I tell them, that I, that I, you know, the topic comes up that I host a podcast. This happens a lot. I was actually, I think we were talking about this too, about, you know, like I go through an airport or something and yeah. I have microphones in my bag. They're like, oh, you a singer? It's like, no, a podcast host. Yeah. And they kind of look at you funny. But then if you further, go further and they say, oh, well, like what kind of podcast? You say a podcast about taxes. Then they really don't know right. what to say next. I mean, it kind of is like, great, have a yeah, nice day, yeah. you know, because it's sort of like a that or I kind of have to feel like I have to laugh a little bit and yeah. be like, yeah, you know, it's, 
it's taxes. If taxes. I, we try to make it interesting. Yeah. And and that's literally what I was trying to create if, yeah. if I kind of go back to it. So the genesis of, 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 of Simply Tax really was kind of creating something I always wish that I had mm. starting out. You know, you talk about that first 10 years of the career and, you know, growing through that, just coming out of school thinking, man, it would be so nice if I had, yeah, I'm driving to work, going for a jog, I'm whatever, just can I get an update on something that I can have an digestible thing that's it's the stuff that I really want to know that I care about, or it's going to help me grow either per- personally, professionally, technically, you know, any of those buckets I'd be happy to fill in that space. Right. right? Um, so it, it came up, my, my role at the time was, was really working with our tax directors and tra- tax leadership across our entire firm. And um, my role is basically to help them serve their offices, you know, their, the people they work with on their teams, the taxpayers they're working with, because we're, you know, we're all a bunch of tax people here. So we, we, you know, we get nerdy on some of the tax stuff, but, but it came up that they said, you know, I, I, one of our tax directors said, I, I feel like our, our new professionals just really aren't, aren't learning some of the stuff sort of turned into maybe a little bit of the, the t- stereotypical conversation about, you know, the, just the differences in the generation, which sure, yeah. it's a whole nother, like, you know, yeah. we, we don't go down that rabbit hole. We'll just, we'll just leave it there. Um, but basically well, on that though, oh, yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah. So, um, to go down the rabbit hole a bit and I don't know where yeah. your conversation had gone with them, but on demand learning yeah. is here to stay and, and mediums and channels and outlets like this fill that. Yep. Right. Like I'll learn it when I need to know it. Or you can help me learn it, you know, quickly. I may not know it deeply, but I'll know it broadly or at least enough to know when I need to dig in. Right. Yeah. No, no. Okay. So that was my response was to say, well, have you considered that like the old portfolios, you know, that you would take yeah. home and you'd read yes. at night and whatever, like that, that, that might not be it. Like they might want a podcast or something. And the response was great. You should do that. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't know what I just signed myself up for because I, I don't know anything about podcasting. Same same deal. I did yeah. not listen to the Tim Ferriss episode yeah. before embarking on this. And, you know, I, so it was a lot of creating from something that's never been done before. Sure. Uh, and obviously, too, we had things to, you know, we're, we're talking about some technical topics we go through. We have a, a quality control process we go right. through and all of that. So just creating the system for this thing to, like, live in was was a large part of uh, figuring that out. But but basically that's it is, is meeting people where they are. You know, some people mm-hmm. like to read and that's great. Some people like to listen to a podcast. Some people like to listen to a video. Some people need a little combination of both from time to time. They need to know it's there when they need it. And that's basically what I try to do, you know, and that's, that's how I've approached it. That's how, if I think about it, the thing that I, that really gets me excited, the thing that I love about my, you know, my profession, what I do in taxes as I try to find the potholes right? Try to, and I try to fill them. So I just say, okay, well, that's a need for you. How can I fill it? How can I help you? Even if it's just, you know, 1%, 2% making something better. So that's basically the whole premise yeah. for the podcast was, hey, how can I make this, this learning about tax thing a little easier? Maybe, yeah. maybe fun, sometimes, maybe hopefully funny at times. I yeah. mean, I don't know, you know, it's sometimes the jokes get a little, a uh, little corny, but yeah, you know, that's all right. It's what I you mean, gotta do. Yeah. I mean, you gotta know your audience a little right. bit, right? Yeah. I appreciate that. But yeah, taking it, I mean, what you have to work with, though, is so, <laughs> with all due respect, is so dry. And, it's dry. And yeah. complex. Mm-hmm. And so how do you take something that's dry and complex and make it fun? I think that's the challenge, right? That's where you're, you know, it's one thing to learn about the spec, you know, the, the technical specs of microphones and, and things like that. But to actually take the content and, you know, I mean, gosh, you're coming up on 100 episodes, right? Like, so some people are listening to it. You know, yeah. people have liked, uh, what they've heard. So well, it's yeah, been, kudos I, to you. I consider it an honor, right. And in, in that I never, I didn't really know what to expect. I'll be honest, going into it. of like, how, you know, are people going to listen? Are they going to like it? I don't know, but that's, that's been part of what's driven me is I, I like to try to pay attention to, well, how are people responding? Anytime I get a chance to ask somebody for, you know, feedback, I genuinely want to know because right. I, I mean, that's the only way I know to say, okay, well, did that did that work for you? Did that not? And I know that it's not going to be all things to all people, right? I mean, you kind of have to focus on, like you said, know your audience, oh, for sure. know that some of those text corny yeah. jokes they're gonna they're gonna land, and just yes. have faith in that. But so tweaking, so started off a little bit more of me talking and sharing because I thought, okay, like I, like I mentioned, wanted that thing growing up of you know, teach me about something about depreciation. I don't know, like is that there's, there's just so much you could talk about depreciation. Pick a yeah, pick, pick your a topic. topic. Yeah, yes. and 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 so I, it kind of started off with me just talking about you know these are some things, these are some topics, these are some current events, and it morphed into all right. Well, I'm going to interview some people, 
And I found, oh, well, you know, people are liking the interview a little bit better. I think it's nice to have some some back and forth. It's, mm. I mean, honestly, who wants to listen to me for, you know, ramble on for 30 minutes? Well, I of, think you do pretty you know, good. I think you could do pretty good at I'll, that. I, I, thank you. But, yeah. you know, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd want to listen to myself for 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, Okay, again, I feel like we're going to have a couple of sidebars here, but okay. the whole experience of like editing podcasts when it's yeah. your voice, how is that for you? Uh, it was horrible at yeah. first, yeah. but then you just get get used to it, right? I guess. I'm I, like I, constantly listening to myself, which is sort of a, yeah, you do get used to it after a while. It's And then, you know, starting to do some video, which is the same thing where I'm just like, ah, I don't really want to. Yeah. I don't oh, really yeah, want to yeah. see you're that guy. Brave, you're, you're more brave and courageous right. than I am. Yeah. Uh, I don't even listen to mine. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll do the editing, and so uh-huh. I hear it over and over and right. over and over. And yeah. um, really, when I'm doing the editing, I'm just it's refinement, right? It's just how do I make the audio better? How do I make the story flow better? You know, thinking about it from a listener standpoint. But then once it's together, I actually don't even yeah listen to. I'll I'll, I'll listen to it at really high speed to make sure there's not anything that you know is disjointed or whatever. I don't chop things up. I just right. kind of remove little sounds. But but other than that. Yeah. Listen to it much again. I've listened to a few, but uh, yeah, I really don't listen to them. I, I will say that you, you know, the guests that you've had on so far have been have been fantastic. I mean, I'm, maybe I'm again a little biased. Again, we talk about this the ICPA leadership conference. You've had you know yeah. two of the the instructors on from that, which are just I mean transformative in my life of of learning from those two, Tom Hood and Gretchen Gret- Pisano. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I don't I, I didn't want to I don't want to butcher the last yeah, name, so no, I kind of pause there. You know, yes, um, but just fantastic, and you've just it shows like your, your attention to the content and the detail, like you, you said, you know, going that extra distance, that that's what really stood out to me, like listening to your podcast. So I'm going to, I'm going to return the compliment and say, oh, you thanks. know, it's great stuff. Yeah. After going through the leadership Academy, what I came out of that with was others need to hear what I just heard and others need to experience what I just experienced. Leadership Academy didn't change. Doesn't it? It didn't, and it won't change your career. It'll change you. Right. And then you will maybe change the direction or trajectory or velocity of your career. Um, but I just thought people needed to hear this. And, and yeah, you, you experienced the same thing. So I, I suspect you're, you're of the same mind that, that you kind of wish that everyone you know or everyone who really wants to continue to grow and have and they have some level of ambition and drive like they should really experience that from that coming out of it for you um what are some of like the key things that are stuck in your mind or that if someone says hey how was that what are the first few things that you go to and and describe for them i think the the biggest thing as I kind of like search for my words here, of because there, it, it is literally so much packed into a four day experience, mm. you know. And I actually had the the pleasure of staying an extra night because I, there was a storm that was coming yeah. through, and so I, you know, flight got canceled. I got to hang out for another day in, in uh, North Carolina, which is which is great, by the way. Yes. So I got a little extra time to reflect on it, but I was I was calling my wife of, hey, first of all, I'm not going to be home tonight. Sorry, I've been gone four days already, and you're at home with the four year old twins, and you know, good luck. Uh, and she's yeah, and good good luck. Yeah. <laughs> but she's and she's fantastic. I mean, yeah. I, obviously, she, I always say she works harder than me, but um, I, I digress. That I I kind of had this exact same like stumbling for words because I'm like I I don't even know if I can explain to you what this experience was like mm-hmm. because it was, it was so you know multi levels. But the biggest takeaway was, and the thing that I've worked on, if I was going to summarize it, is kind of this focusing on the inner game to really, you know, transform your outer game. So, you know, focusing on me so I can help others, so I can yes. lead. You know, if I if I don't have my act together, if I don't have my head kind of screwed on straight, I, I can't help the team that I'm working with. I can't help the, you know, the taxpayers that I'm working with. I can't even parent my children right. well, which is kind of something I'm working on right now is like, all right, I got to get my my parenting skills, yes. you know, and, and, and get that worked out. And so, yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, like, that's so 30,000 feet, feet, which I, which I like, I hate to do yeah. is, is just knowing that, all right, I got to slow down a little bit. I got to focus on me a little bit, even yes. when, especially when like the going gets tough, right? right? Deadlines, you know, stressful situations. I've got to be constantly feeding myself, fueling myself so that I can, I can handle those situations appropriately. Yeah. It's that intentionality in a lot yeah. of different yeah. 
parts of life and focusing when you say like focusing on me like that yeah I res that resonates with me but it's it's in the more for me it was like the self discovery aspect of mm. how do I mm -hmm. function at an optimal level like how do I get there and how do I stay there and then and then there's this complete flip side of the leadership academy where you're talking about high level strategy, developing strategy and aligning resources and tactics. So you, you've got kind of the business element of it to become uh -huh. a leader, but in order to actually effectively do those things, you have to have that healthy personal practice of improvement. And yeah. I think that's, that's really what it gave me. But you said you were stumbling for words. That's why I wanted to get Tom and Gretchen on the mic and yeah. say, you guys do that. You guys yeah. tell us this stuff and let's just share it. And they, and they, and they've done that and do that all over. Like you can go and get it. I just wanted to offer another Avenue. For yeah. I them. mean, there's, there's no, uh, ex, you know, substitute for yeah. hearing it from their mouth. So let's see what class read. I was in the 10th class, which was just this past, uh, 2018. Yeah. I was in year. 15. So that must've okay. been seven then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, for doing the, for doing the math thing. right. I mean, yeah. I don't, so, I, I don't math very well no, from being a CPA, which yeah. is kind of scary. But you know, you know what? Not all CPAs know taxes, and not all CPAs uh, know math really well. It's true, right? It's got to break the, sh the stereotype here. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it, like other professions probably have the same thing. You know, anybody in the healthcare space, it's like, oh, you work in healthcare. I've had this ache in my knee. Right. They're like, <laughs> look, buddy, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Another thing that I think is great about the Leadership Academy is that the participants, so our fellow classmates, if you will. One, they're from all over the country. Two, it's a very diverse group of people, not just in uh, gender or race or, or anything like that, but geographically, thought, what profession they're in, whether they're in public accounting, whether in um, you know governmental, not-for-profit, corporate. I mean, there's just such a good mix of people and um, all in the relatively the similar age range. And all had to apply to get in, all had to get some form of reference. And so there's this level of ambition and there's this level of, I want to get something out of this that I thought was just powerful. Maybe that was another realization too, is when you surround yourself with people who are like-minded, not the same, but like-minded and driving toward the same goal, like you can accomplish so, so much. I yeah. mean, it's just... It's crazy. I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel like I learned as much from the other participants. Um, and you were there because you came and shared some of your experience yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, and listening to you and kind of what that meant for you and, and how you've actually, you know, taken that back and applied it. Because that's always the thing I kick myself on is like, I never feel like I can like apply it to the level that right. I would aspire to. Right. But I, yeah, I learned just so much from those conversations um, in addition to and how to apply it because I think that is the hardest thing is, like you said, there's on in the world of on demand, like everything. Right. I mean, you can go out there and find a video or a podcast or a, you know, an article or whatever it is on these different things, and at any point in time. But then, what do you? How do you actually implement it? How do you actually take action on it? Make change. Be innovative. How do you do it? And that's that's the piece that is like the missing link. Yes. And and you have done that. So yeah, tell me about that. You're about it's almost a year, is it? That that you're yeah, you almost a year on, since on I your firm launched the firm. Yep. Um, yeah, you're right. What do you do about it? And leading up to venturing out on my own and kind of starting this this journey or continuing on a journey was a process that that happened over a number of years. It probably started with Leadership Academy, opened my eyes to certain things. Uh, I put my intentions in certain places to really kind of have that self-care and, and growth. Uh, and then looked around and surveyed the landscape and thought to myself, you know, what, what do I want to do in my career? Uh, unfortunately, the answer was, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was, I was, I was like, I could do that and I could do this. And the path that I'm on looks really good. And, um, the people I work with are great, but again, there was just something missing there. And over that time, uh, I discovered that in life, when we talk about those things that are keeping you excited and busy, it's usually you're going towards something. You're, you're striving towards something. Maybe it's you want to buy your first car. Maybe it's you want a promotion or a raise or having a child or getting married or whatever it is. You kind of lead up to a moment. 
And I thought, man, I've, I've passed these moments and they've all been wonderful, but they're just moments. Mm-hmm. And so it caused me to look at my career a little bit differently and say, well, what do I really want? Do I want my working toward a moment or am I working toward an experience or a set of experiences that lead to different moments? In fact, ones that I don't even know exist. And there was something exciting and scary about that. And, and it was just this two-year period of grappling with, with fear uh, of myself. Like, why do I want the things that I want? Why have I sought, you know, sought the things that I sought? Certain just introspective things that you know, my family really didn't know I was kind of going through and, and dealing with. Nothing terrible or anything. Right. I had to live a great life. I yeah, mean, there's, yeah, no, yeah. there's nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's just, you know, we all kind of deal with with that. Like, what am I doing here? And where am I going? And things like that. Well, and I think that's interesting, you know, because it is also interconnected, right? All of those things. If you're, if you got something going on personally, it's, it's going to affect your work. If you got something out at work, I mean, I, I will candidly say, right, I had a, you know, a little bit of a rougher day, we'll just say yesterday, yeah. right? And then just coming home, I felt like I, my full self wasn't present right. in it, and I was, I was, I was unhappy with myself because I felt like you know, nobody wanted to play, and I was kind of like, you know, let, let's a little bit, and then he fell asleep, and we didn't, you know, the yeah. opportunity happened. Yeah, so I kind of yeah. felt like, oh man, like I let myself down. But I mean, being honest with ourselves, that's what's going to happen. But I guess what you're basically doing was making yourself vulnerable in, yeah. in what you just said. You shared that like we all have these moments. I mean. I'm going to take a swag at the percent, like what, like 80% of people aren't comfortable, maybe more than that, aren't comfortable to admit that. But I mean, come yeah. on, like every single one of us oh, yeah. have these, like some form of fears or anxieties or something. I mean, it, it, it does. It all manifests itself very, very differently for all of us. And some people are, are better at coping with that than others. But I mean, if we're going to be honest, well, it's subtle. We're all struggling with it. It's yeah. subtle too. Yeah. So you don't even really know, like the, the fear or insecurity or whatever it is that's inside of us that's keeping us from doing something or keeping us doing something uh, is is so subtle and nuanced and and it's not the same for everybody and and you kind of yeah like you said you cope with it a little bit differently and it almost sounds weird to even say like oh I overcame my fear no it was just I was I didn't walk around scared I wasn't yeah. fearful of life but what was I so afraid of by leaving your jo- a job or trying something new or uh, taking on a new responsibility outside of work and outside the home. I mean, what was I so afraid of, right? I mean, yeah, I, it's hard to answer that. It's, it's really the fear of failure. It's the fear of losing some level of comfort, even though that's what we all chase. So we kind of, it's this weird circular thing, right? Like we chase comfort and then we get too comfortable and you either kind of regress a bit or just kind of long for something else, but don't know how to do it. And you know, it's just this weird. Yeah. So well, that's where the intentionality comes exactly into play. Right. right. Yeah. But I think what I've learned from just this whole process and, and probably yeah, in the last couple of years of, of launching the podcast, doing all that and, yeah. and kind of some of the other things that we've been doing is you've got to have that element of vulnerability to have creativity. I think it's a requirement almost. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, cause if, if you're not stretching yourself, if you're not yes. getting the butterflies, if you're not, admitting that you, you know, it's not going to be perfect. And that's, that's cool with me. I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, then I don't think you can create, I don't think you can be creative right. if you don't do that. I mean, ideas come through vulnerability, mm. allowing yourself to think a little bit differently. I, I, I'm sure I'll get some flack from the team because I bring this up a, a few times, but one of, one of the things that you know, I want to make sure that we do and whatever I'm doing is elevating. We talked a little bit, elevating the client experience. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, that our mind easily goes to, oh, well, I'll respond to them more quickly, or I'll um, give them their turn around their project more quickly, or call them up more frequently. You know, we kind of think of some of those things as elevating experience. And and I, I'm like, well, what if we, for every piece of paper that we give to them, it has this pleasant smell. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, like, what if, yeah. what if, you know, every time, and again, it goes back to the packaging, right? Most people would maybe not even smell it or even care, but almost subtly, like every little thing we do has this element of like elevating that experience in a different way. The idea is probably stupid. May, I'm sure there's scented paper out there somewhere and some people might be using it, but it's just like being willing to kind of throw an idea out there like that and, and, you know, might just 
be the stupidest idea in the world. But there's a level of vulnerability there. And then fear keeping you from even bringing certain things up. Even like having that thought. But yeah, yeah. like the smell of uh, a fresh baked cookies with every, with every tax return. Yes. Every oh, why Whatever. not? Why yeah. not? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it could be something just you'd think th that's insane. That's so stupid. Why would I do that? And it might be insane and stupid, but it might be brilliant. And it yeah. might be a way to set yourself apart just small. And if, and if nothing else, what you're doing is you're creating a culture yeah. that accepts and promotes that level of vulnerability, that level of risk taking, that level of creativity, yeah. right? In 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 doing that. So um, now you come from a performance background a bit, right? Yeah. So you yeah. are a music major. That's right. At Berkeley. And, yeah. At what, UC Berkeley. What and, did uh, yeah. what what was the music? Did you play an instrument? Did you? I did. I played several, but really mostly the piano. Okay. Uh, I still do. I, I will admit that I've. I look at it. Something I've learned as I've matured is, is kind of phase of life that you're going to have different things you're going to focus on at different times. So the, the music's kind of taken a little bit of a, you know, I've, I've backed off on a little bit mm. intentionally. I think I, as I've, maybe initially it was not intentionally. It yeah. was sort of just kind of falling off and I'm like, ah, I'm feeling terrible that I'm not, you know, yeah. doing this. But in my mind, I'm going, all right, again, the young family, the work, all that, you know, making sure I'm doing the things that I care about. As long as they're checking all the boxes, I'm, I'm happy yeah. and do the music. But yeah, it started off, I, I would... I did a lot of performance. I did a lot of jazz, did a, did a lot of, um, was classically trained, did a, kind of just a hodgepodge of things. I, I've played it, you know, all sorts of different events. I did a lot of weddings and actually it was kind of mm. nice through college because you could kind of, you know, pick yeah. up some change on the weekends, do a couple weddings. Right. Um, you know, everybody likes the, you know, the piano. Oh, everybody's they, they, happy. They bring them in. Yeah. They're happy. Yeah. It's great moods. You know, as long as you don't, I don't know, I, I did always feel a little bit of stress. I'll admit that if, if I was playing like the processional or the recessional, I, I would always... Mm. Like that's going in their video. I don't want to mess it's up. It'll last forever. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. pretty, you know, you talk about responsibility you put on yourself. I'm like, man, I, I don't want this to sound bad. So they you know, they go back, you know, 10 years later, they dust off the wedding video. And they're like, man, that, that guy that we hired to play the piano, I mean, he stunk, you know, like, I, but, uh, but yeah, no, so I had, it, there was definitely a performance element to it. I was training and the kind of the road I was on was actually education. I kind of aspired in, in you know, to maybe help others to to learn to to do that performance as well. Mm. Um, or, you know, I, I was going to be, I wanted to be a college professor. I was going to go continue on, get the master's, get the PhD, study music, loved every bit of it. But I also had this, you know, along the way, about midway, and maybe it sounds like you had the same experience. Because uh, I think you and I are pretty unique in that, right? I mean, you don't yeah. meet a whole lot of people of like, well, I studied music. Hard turn, so I'm a tax accountant yeah. now. You know, I mean, the same thing, right? It's like, hey, I've done some some improv. I've done some, you know, right. I was going to be an actor. Well, yeah. Yeah. All right, now Seven I'm a CPA. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't know how that exactly reconciles, but. Well, but I'll tell you what. Yeah. I mean, if you look at both of us right now, like the, the elements of creativity and the elements of performance have somehow come out, right? Yeah, they I manifest mean, another way. I mean, I, maybe you were the same. I mean, all throughout my career in the, in the firms, I helped with trainings, you know, something that kind of brought out that performance element. But look at you, you're, you're saying uh, performance and education. And yeah. that's sort of what you've been doing here at the firm and really getting, you know, again, some dry, maybe uh, important, but albeit boring issues. It's a bit you're, boring attacks, you're, yeah. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're tossing on some spice and it, you know, it's kind of, livening up those taste buds a bit. I never thought of it that way, but it's kind of, it's like cooking, right? It's, it's you just, gotta, you got to get that mix and it's, 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 it's not easy. Cause I think the hardest part sometimes is you can make it fun. Like just think of like parody videos that people do, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can make it fun and funny, but like, is there any, like, other than like watching somebody like do something like really ridiculous or like hilarious, like what's, what's the value proposition of that, that video. Right. right? Yeah. But then you get the, the opposite extreme where it's like, you can like change all the words around and make them like, so it's, it's like maybe not as fun to listen to. It's, it's kind of dry and boring to your point, but like, man, we just like figured out how to like take this song and we've, you know, made all these internal revenue code revenue section, uh, you know, references or whatever. And so there's, there's like this like spot in the middle that like, yeah. is like that sweet spot of like, okay, I'm going to bake this you know, or make this dish, you know, the same thing, kind of this, this nice intersection of the spices and the, mm. and the ingredients and all that and get them all together mm -hmm. and kind of meet somewhere in the middle. And yeah. that, I, I look at that as like, that excites me. That's my, cha that's the challenge I look at is like, totally. how can I, um, and it's probably no difference th than, than playing the piano. Right. Um, cause I do, a, you know, again, kind of more of the jazz, the blues, that side, it's a lot, a little more improv. Right. Yeah. And 
that's the thing that like I enjoy most about playing is actually playing with other people mm. and then, or listening to people and, and then kind of responding to them mm. in the moment of like, you, you just never know what you're going to get. Mm. Even if you've rehearsed it, you've played it exactly the same a, a bunch of times in the past. Maybe that one day you're feeling a little bit different or, or something struck you just a little bit differently, mm. or you saw someone in the first row had like, Oh, they kind of smiled when you did that or something. So then you respond to it. And, and that's yeah. what I've tried conversation. to do. It's a conversation. Yeah. And I think that's, again, as you bring that up, like that's effectively what I've done in, in podcast form, Yeah, right? Is like, I'm, I'm performing and it is a performance thing. I, I would never have told you like on the onset, like this is what I'm setting out to do. I just sort right. of transpired that way, but you're right. It, it had its way of manifesting itself as all right, that outlet for that creativity of that pairing things together in a unique uh, and new way. I think that's pretty profound in a way that if you allow yourself, going back to this vulnerability issue, like let your guard down, you'll eventually discover things that you enjoy doing. I mean, even right where you are. So even if you have some sort of restlessness or, you know, something just doesn't seem to be right, it doesn't mean you're in the wrong spot. Right. It yeah. doesn't mean you're not where exactly where you're supposed to be. It just might mean that you haven't quite found your stride yet. You know, you've haven't gotten that rhythm. And like, man, this is this is exciting. Now, not everything in life is exciting and it's not meant to be, I don't think. I mean, we've got to take the trash out. I prefer to not take trash out, but we do it because I prefer that over the alternative, right? Like there's there's things that you you deal with um, that you may not like, but finding those little nuggets of like glory that where you just come alive, that's, that's where everyone should get to. I don't care if you're a kid or, you know, you're, you've been working in our profession for 40 years. It's, uh, it's something that just makes you feel alive. And what better feeling is there than to feel alive? Oh yeah, no. And, and I think Maybe hearkening back to the the leadership academy and, and takeaways, something that I've implemented it was in, and I it started down this road probably going into it as well, but I've just really tried to embrace it. Is you got to create some space to grow, right? Mm. If if you don't if you don't allow yourself space to reflect, to you know think about these ideas, to kind of ideate and and you know come up with different mm. things, then it's not going to happen. So for me, where I found that um, in again, you talk about like interesting times to do things. So I, I moved, you know, to Springfield, Missouri, right. About four years ago, right after, if, if you notice, I'm referencing my four-year-old twins. So like the twins weren't yeah. even one yet. We decided we're going to go move to a brand new area. It was an opportunity for work. Loved it. It was, it was a great experience, but you know, you talk about something that just totally shakes up your world. Yeah. Well, I decided like shortly thereafter, like to say, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a marathon. I've never done this before, but like I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And, and so it meant me like, you know, just training and getting the, and I had the, you know, I still have the double stroller and we go out. Yeah. We're getting a little heavy now. I yeah. will, I will say <laughs> good they training, start running one but of these we're days. not going very fast at times. But, but what that's created is this space for me to think. And, and, and like, that is the reason I run in large part is to just have this time to be in my head mm. and to be able to think about things or maybe even not necessarily like, I get this question of like, what do you think about? Like, if you're going to go run, 26.2 miles. Like, what are you doing that whole time? Like, are you listening to music? Are you, what are you doing? I said, a lot of times I'm just kind of like, I, I don't know. I don't even know necessarily what I'm thinking about. I just, I right. just let my mind kind of, um, go where it, yeah, kind of where it wants to go. And it's almost like, a. I, a lot of times I'll describe it as, uh, you know, like your mind's kind of like a computer in a lot of ways, I guess some ways, yes, some ways, no. Right. But mm -hmm. it's sort of like defragmenting, like, the, I, I, like all the files are sort of like just getting kind of jumbled back yes. and put back in place, you yes. know? Um, and that's what running is meant for me. But I, I've, I've kind of tried to really focus on that. And, you know, even when the, again, the going gets tough, I was saying that earlier, like I got to go for a run, mm -hmm. even though my, my reaction is like, I got to push harder. I got to work more. I got to, you know, make sure I'm there to, you know, take out the trash. I got to do all these things. And I stress myself out. Like you wouldn't believe it, the last thing you think of is, you know, what I should do is I should go take an hour run. That's probably what I should do. Yeah. Like, it just seems so counterintuitive but it's exactly what I need to do. Right. Like reset, feed myself. So that way I can, I can help others. I can lead the team. I can come up with new ideas. I can, you know, have time to have conversations, think about things. So I don't know, a little bit of a, of a, you know, a sidebar there, no, but, but that, I mean, it's, but that's yeah. the, that's a great way to explain what you come out of leadership Academy with is yeah. those, 
those thoughts. Like I would have never thought about that before beforehand. And and some people, um, those blessed individuals out there, they're like, oh yeah, what well, you like, duh. Um, how come you, you didn't think of that yeah, before? How come you didn't think of that come before? On, you know, I think you just get busy, right? You just yeah. do. You just go, and right. you don't think about uh, refueling or or what have you. Um, Gretchen's big thing is she has her master's in applied positive psychology. She teaches this framework uh, that that helps you understand these elements of well being in your life. Yeah, and the whole intentionality aspect of it is one understanding it, and then two doing something about it. So uh, that's why I think it's it's a perfect example of what you just said of, man, I, I feel like I'm creeping into this zone over here. And I know that there's a, there's a solution to that yeah. or, or uh, one or two things that could, that could help. And that's when we say intentionality, it's those things. It's like, I know the trigger and I know the, the release, you know, or I'm going to plug your podcast here for a second and and say that the eighth episode of your, your podcast mm. is talking about what to say yes to. Okay, so when I said earlier that I don't math very well, I guess I wasn't getting around because the episode of Tim's podcast that I was referring to is actually episode nine. And we've included a link to it in the show notes this episode, which are available at bkd.com slash simply tax. So go check it out. And I have learned to focus on on strengths and and you know mm. deflect some of the weaknesses. You got you got to manage them right, but yeah. really try to focus on the strengths. An area of mine is I like to help. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you take on too much to help, and then you're kind of not helping anybody. Exactly. And you kind of lay out a framework in that episode that I will I will admit I intentionally go back to, <laughs> probably quarterly. Yeah. Uh, so for somebody that you know maybe you don't listen to yourself a whole lot, yeah. I, I've listened oh, to thanks. you a, a bunch there. Of you got this three, three, and three. You know these yeah. nine questions to ask yourself, three buckets you put them in to kind of assess what to say yes to. Mm. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna plug that because I, I really think that is such a powerful thing that's that's helped me. But maybe you could talk a little bit about that and in, instead of focusing on the no, right. focusing on the positive, focusing exactly. on the yes. Yeah. So so uh, common problem that many of us, again, I'm going to use the word ambitious, driven, people who want to improve and, and progress and accomplish some really cool things, um, you get into is that it's this double-edged sword of, of getting the experience, but then um, being overloaded at the same time. And so then not truly realizing the experience. And so uh, th- there's plenty of podcasts, articles, maybe even books out there teaching you how to say no, because the problem is uh, it's not saying yes, because we have overloaded lives. And so how do we approach saying no? And which is fine. I'm not, I'm not making a judgment on that. I think that's important skill to learn, but we overlook what are we actually saying yes to? And and how, how should we evaluate the things that we participate in, you know, whether it be through work or personal life or, or whatever, uh, how do we evaluate that? And and so, um, again, we'll go back to the Leadership Academy, Gretchen. You know, a lot of this is you know is very influential. But uh, it's this it's this idea. It's a checklist. It's a framework. It's just a way of thinking through some things. And I try to offer some 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 help to be like, yeah, should I run a marathon or or shouldn't I? And maybe the first question would be, do you want to run a marathon? You know, it, which is it sounds silly and and elementary and simplistic, but do you want to? Yeah. Uh, what feelings would could you expect to experience in doing that? Right. Uh, and then and then move into like, do you have the time to do it? And and if you need to put an element of time or a block of time into your schedule, do you have to take something out? Or what are you going to replace? Uh, when does it end? So, so there are questions like that. And and there are, it's just this framework like um, how does it feel? How does a, 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 a certain opportunity feel to you? Do you want to do it? Do you think it'll, be, it'll create stress? Do you think it'll create, you know, some positive emotion? Uh, how does it fit? Can you do it? Like logistically, geographically, all of these things, like can you do it? Uh, and then the third is how does it further, right? So how does it feel? How does it fit? And how does it further? How does it further my career or the skill development or, you know, give me some uh, expanded perspective or or build your network even, you know, like what's it, what am I going to get from it? Not in a selfish way, but what am I going to take along with me as I continue on the journey, Mm -hmm. right, going forward? And so just a different way to, to help think through 
certain projects. And honestly, I came up with that when yeah, I was going through the same sort of thing. And there were these, I'll use air quotes, opportunities that came my way. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, I can't do all of them. And what do I really want to do? Is it the person who asked me first? Is it, what is it? And And that got me thinking, well, I should probably think of a way to think through these things. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I'll just end up doing, I'll, I'll let others dictate my my schedule and my 100%. time. And so it's really that that episode was more about a, a time management and getting some control over your your life because it goes quick because we just don't think about it. We just go and we do, right? And yeah. that's kind of the theme of Gotta be this conversation. Got to be intentional. So you've moved around though. You, you spent some time, like you said, in Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. That's yeah, which Missouri, is how you say it. If you're, you say it? F- if you're from there, yeah, that's I don't a distinction. Quite, I don't quite understand that. Have you? Did you? Uh, I ever have yet explore that to find somebody that can explain to me phonetically why that is the case. But mm-hmm. my understanding is, if you're born in Missouri, you refer to it as Missouri. Missouri. I, I was there for a you know a stint of time, yes. so I, I still refer to it as Missouri. Yes. But, yes, uh, and I do know. too. And I won't give in like politicians do sure. when they go there and yeah. they. All of a sudden, change how they say to nod uh, to the, the word. I mean, uh-huh. I would be offended if I right, was a right. Missourian or whatever, whatever they're called. I'd be offended at that. But you, you spent time there. You grew up on the West Coast, yeah. And you spent a number of years in Chicago, a couple different times. So, yeah. um, how has that helped shape your worldview or, or the way that you approach maybe even your profession? I, some people like me, I've stayed in a relatively. I lived in Michigan, grew up in Michigan, and. And lived here in Chicago, but not not a lot of long term stints elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, but I have to imagine that that impacts you. Everything does. But how, does. how have you found it? Maybe within the firm, maybe within life in general. How have you found that impacting you? Having those varying experiences of culture and society. What's interesting is you you kind of see the differences and you appreciate the differences, but then you see the common threads. And the similarities, right? And patterns, uh, you know, like you just recognize patterns, right? Mm-hmm. But I think the thing that it's taught me is just an, such an appreciation for people that people have different communication styles. I mean, I'll admit, I think nobody's perfect at this. Well, maybe there's somebody, but if you know them, let me know. But that that can, um, you know, perfectly know like what the other person is thinking and try to have an open mind to, okay, well, that person just cut me off on the highway. You know, you know what? I bet you're having a really hard day, and right. you know, kind of giving them the benefit of the doubt. And I think that it's it's helped me to do that, and to also understand that sometimes people communicate in different ways. That um, you know, maybe maybe it be culturally or their customs or whatever. Like they don't even know they're offending somebody else. Like they mean nothing by it, and and try to have an open mind to that. So I think that's been the mm. the mm-hmm. the thing that I've learned. I as a person, I. Grew up in, in, in California, right? Northern California, Central Valley. Went to school in, in the Bay Area, UC Berkeley, which is a very interesting and diverse campus as well. Yeah. So a lot of interesting experiences and people, which really just broadened my horizons there. And you just realize like, um, especially because the campus is so large and there are so many people on it that you're like, wow, there are a lot of people here and I'm just one of many, you know, tens of thousands of people yes. that go to the school. And it was a really neat experience for that, but it definitely also just teaches you an appreciation for, I guess the way I would, I would call it is maybe like monitoring your wake and how you impact other people um, mm. and, and being aware of that. So that's kind of been the experience. So I ended up moving to the Midwest. Really, my, my wife and I, we were, we were back in our hometown. Both of us had had sworn we were going to live elsewhere. Like when we got done, like the vision of like, I'm going to get done with college and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do this and that. And you know, it always changes, right? But well, maybe not for everybody. It changes for me. Um, changed for my wife. And so we- It always changes. It, it changes. It always I changes. I mean, if we're going to be honest, in some way, shape or form, there's a curveball in there somewhere. On a side note, yeah. um, how many plans do you make that actually happen the way you planned them? Even making weekend plans, oh, yeah. right? Like nothing- <laughs> happens the way exactly the way you plan them right right like and that not to not to dip back into you know my podcast called journey view podcast the firm i named after the podcast essentially because it was this whole i think you can see it now it's like this idea of the journey like right. nothing happens as as you plan it and so why not just embrace that but anyways yes. no and well, you, you honestly get, if i and I, I love that point the journey and and like loving the journey like if you don't enjoy the journey then like why why are you doing it? Because literally the entire thing is the journey. It is. There is no destination. There I mean, is if no you destination, think about it, right. they're just mile markers along right. the way. That's right. it. Right. That's it. It's a moment in time that culminates 
where if you're going up to the peak of a mountain, the whole thing is the journey and you and reaching the top is just kind of the culmination of a lot of work right. and effort. Right. But then you're there and then you say, all right, well, I guess we'll head back down, you know, and you just continue, you move. And so having that mindset of just like, man, embracing that like constant change or being open to that and being flexible so that you can adapt, um, I think is just so critical to happiness and well-being and things like that. Absolutely it is. And, and, I, and I think being open to, you know, when there's a fork in the road and maybe take a different path. And that's, and that is kind of exactly how I ended up in Chicago, honestly, that we were going through this period of like, well, do we really want to be, uh, do, do we really want to stay in our hometown? No, that, that, okay. So where are we going to go? All right. We're, we're evaluating this. We had, we had made a trip actually to, to Indiana at the time, made a stop by Chicago. And we're like, quite honestly, what we were going to do is because I, I went to school in the Bay Area, love the Bay Area, still love the Bay Area. My wife went to school in San Diego. Oh, and, and and so she was, you know, thought she's going back to San Diego. I thought I was going back to Bay Area. So we were going to flip. Like that was quite honestly what we were going to do. We were going to flip for it. And then that was where we were going to go live. No way. Serious. Like, and this is already <laughs> like, I was probably, you know, six or seven years into the career. I mean, I loved what I was, I, I loved like who I was working with. Fantastic firm. Loved what I was doing. Um, but just that, you know, I, I kind of want to do this someplace else and be open to the, so the fork in the road was starting to open up there, um, made a trip out of Chicago. It was like one of those like amazing weekends yeah. where you just have like just the perfect weather and it's, it's fantastic. And so we just said, forget flipping, we're moving to Chicago. Yeah. And, and I kid you not, like everyone was like, are you crazy? Like it snows there. <laughs> I'm like, I know, I yeah, know. Like, uh, so, so maybe cold. one thing I have learned about like moving to the Midwest um, is, is an appreciation for the weather. Yeah. Cause you you really, you know, the, the weathermen in, in California, so at least in Northern California, they have a pretty decent, like, you know, model of what's going to happen. Right. It, the storms generally go the same direction. Like they can tell you like next week, usually within pretty precise accurateness of right. like the storm is going to come in at this time. And then it's like, it's right. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's, it's still a guess and models and things outside of control, but it's a whole lot more accurate than it is in Chicago. Oh, I yeah. will tell you. And, and, and so that's been an experience in learning like, okay, I've got to get like a real winter jacket, not like the, you know, the thing that looks good. Like the one that like is a legit thing that's going to keep me warm. And so you just, you gain appreciation for things like that. It's mm. the subtleties, mm -hmm. but then also the same, the, the same things, right? Cause I, I, I changed firms. I've, you know, mm. you see some of the same, the same challenges that and you realize everybody has these same challenges. Everybody has on the same challenge of figuring out, what is the journey I'm on? Do I like it? Am I happy with it? And there's going to be times that it's going to feel better and feel worse. Sure. And it's just human nature. And I think that's what I've learned by kind of moving around a little bit Yeah, is, you know, you have this appreciation for your people. You have this appreciation for how they communicate. And then you realize that, man, where are they on their journey? And, you know, how does that relate to me? And can I help mm. them? And I don't know, it, it all kind of gets yeah. back to it. So it's it's just this awareness of just kind of, we're all sort of in this thing together. We, it may look and feel totally different for somebody. And I, and I appreciate and have empathy for that, but, but man, are, are we all just trying to figure this thing out? Yeah. We're all co-travelers, right? Yeah, like, right. and it's just, sometimes we travel together. Sometimes we split off. That's um, why like when we find somebody and I think like, I don't know, I, I, I was excited for this conversation in part because I'm like, are right, you're a fellow traveler that has like such great perspective that has, you know, eyes open. You've learned from different experiences and like, okay, we can, we can share our experiences, mm -hmm. successes, failures, whatever they may be. And then, you know, help each other on the journey. So when you find someone like that, it's just like, all right, I'll, man, I gotta, I gotta have you in the podcast. So we can have a conversation. Yeah. You know? Like let's, let's, let's keep this thing going because, 100%. um, you got to find some good fellow uh, journeyers with you, you know? And there's many out there who are listening to this to know that are, you know, we're hitting on all cylinders. I mean, when you think back on your journey to date, and some of it's probably on autopilot, and you're not thinking this, you know, self-aware, you weren't this self-aware all throughout the way. I mean, it's, it's probably impossible to be as self-aware as you are right now. You know, in the past, you only continue to become more so, I, I think. Hindsight you know, is twenty twenty, yeah, as they say, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, like man, you, you look back and you can. You, it seems so clear now. So right? if you could do, if you can yeah. go back, right, and talk to, you know, twenty year old Damien or or twenty two year old, go back fifteen years or so, and you could sit down for fifteen twenty minutes, have a coffee with your with yourself. What what are you going to yeah. say? And what are the important messages that you want to communicate 
to yourself that might, you know, maybe not ruin the journey or spoil the journey. I mean, lottery numbers, that's where I would go. I yeah. get some, yeah. you know, the the Powerball numbers, but but I'd also, you know, probably share a few other things. What are what are some things that you've experienced over time that said, "You know what? It would have been nice to have this little nugget of insight." Uh, 15 years ago. Absolutely. And I like how you, you, you kind of started with like 20 year old Damien and then you kind of like backed, you went, went forward a little bit because I'm going to be honest, like 20 year old yeah, Damien I know, I probably know. wouldn't listen wouldn't to listen, like, no. you know, 2019 Damien. Like, I'd be like, no, I got it all figured <laughs> no, out. Right, I'm man. 20. I'm yeah. invincible. Like, I mean, I, I is like, again, cliche is and silly as that sounds. Like, I quite honestly, well, was we like all are. In I mean, everybody, mindset, right? everybody is. I mean, you, you're having kids, you're going to experience their free will and be oh, like, boy. oh my yeah. goodness. Well, and then you just learn how much, like, you. I always thought, like, and I've gained such, not that I didn't appreciate and have respect for my parents before, but like, it has only deepened by having kids because then I'm like, oh my gosh, this whole time I thought you had the whole thing figured out. And then I realized, like, there is no user manual here, like, laying around yeah. like they just like give you it's like here's the kid and here's the user manual like right. they don't they don't do that right. and so you're just you're just flying by the seat of your pants yeah. and and i think that would be i think that would kind of be kind of going back to the the space and the time I, I would tell myself to you know make sure to keep the time for reflection and to focus so to allow things to grow to be creative because that is what fuels me right and, and making sure to always kind of self-care self-care is is probably the most important thing because if you don't have your head screwed on straight. Again, kind of what we we're saying before. You can feel like you repeat yourself when you talk for a period of time, right? right. If you don't have your head screwed on straight, you're, how are you going to help anybody else? How are you going to be successful? How are you going to grow? You can't. So you've, you've got to do that. And I think the other thing is just to, again, use that word intentionality. Because I think if you're reactive to things, that just it just doesn't scale. You know what I mean? Like you can do that for a period of time. Maybe just think about like riding down the freeway, right? Like you're uh, going back to the distance, the difference thing of like where you live, like freeway, highway, like that's, that's a different thing. So like I said, freeway, and I'm pretty sure like nobody here would say freeway. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Like, I, I think, think that's so. a California I, Sometimes thing. I say that. I don't need, I don't know what the difference is. So I'm I, not I'll really sure either. Interstate, interstate. Uh, freeway, highway. Well, and it's funny too, because you can pick up on like, like you can tell if I, I can tell if someone's from Northern California or Southern yeah. California based off of how, what they refer to interstate five, yeah. if they call it the five or I five, or like you can kind of generally tell like where in the state somebody's from <laughs> just by, by that. And the same thing from like here in, in Missouri, Missouri, you figure these things yeah. out. But, but I think it's, um, you can drive down the highway going a hundred at your goal. It's going to get you there fast, right? Like at, at different times. And maybe sometimes you got to, you, you got to go a hundred because you're, I don't know, you, you can see a, a night tight window. You're passionate about something. You've, you've got the, it's got the fit for your life right now. You can't go a hundred miles an hour down the freeway indefinitely. You got to, you got to take a pit stop at the very, you know, at the very least, got to get some new tires, get some gas in there. You're, you're probably going to need to pull over the slow lane at times and it's painful to do. And trust me, like I, I really, really struggle with this now, but if I was to tell myself, you know, 20 year old Damien is like, you, you really got to build in those times where you say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to intentionally move over to the slow lane, kind of downshift a little bit, take care of myself, reset, think, create this space to grow so that I can keep going because it is the journey. It's a long journey. Mm -hmm. It's again, going back to that marathon training. That's something I learned from that is like, you know, you, you can go all out at the beginning, but you're not going to finish it the way right. you want. You're not going to feel good about it. And, and I think that's, if, if I could tell myself to do that and you know, that would be really beneficial to yeah. kind of current. And if I could tell my current self that sometimes, <laughs> no. I think that would be cool yeah, too. No. Cause yeah. I mean, it, I, it is, it is again, like the hardest thing, kind of like the saying no and yes thing. Like it, you know, you can go down the road, you get so excited about things. And sometimes you can just, you can burn yourself yes. out if you're not careful yeah. and you, you really got to pace yourself. You really got to pace yourself. Well, it's this yeah. whole mentality of slow is fast. Slow yeah. is fast. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the, really the only way to get there. Like certain right. things you can't, you can't force no. and doing things slowly is the fastest way to get somewhere. So that's awesome. Yeah. It's a, um, well, well put well counterintuitive put. to think, that way, but slowing down will speed you up. I mean, you've probably heard this. People uh, routinely overestimate the amount that they can get done in a day and underestimate the, the amount that they can get done in a year. Yeah. Right. And that is Boy, so that. <laughs> true, right? I, yeah. I mean, who listening right now is maybe even staring at a to-do list that they created this morning because creating that to-do list felt productive. And we have this 
productivity addiction, and we list out all of the things that we think we can get done today, and literally there might be eight and one of them maybe if we're lucky, we'll get done, right? We overestimate the amount we can accomplish in one day. But yeah, when we look at a whole year, we don't think, man, I could be, look how far I could be if I just slow it down a little bit, get intentional, right? that, that word, uh, and do things more methodically and take care of myself along the way and reflect along the way and do those sorts of things. I mean, you'll, you'll get to where you're going, tortoise hair, you know, we can yeah, talk about all of those fables absolutely. that are well, but and they're they're timeless, yes. and, and because because they're true. Yep. It's sometimes it's the simple things again, the no yes thing, probably common sense to some people, but gosh, sometimes the simplest things are the hardest thing to actually implement, and that's yeah. why when you find somebody that can can phrase it in a way that makes sense to you, like, man, you got to just embrace that and you got to you got to enjoy that. Well, it's like meditation. I'm yep. sure you've read about or heard about, right? Like meditation is becoming more and more popular outside of, uh, you know, in, well, into the mainstream, right? There's lots of people that talk about it, the health benefits coming out about it. And then, um, you know, if you're anything like me, I, I, when I first hear about it, I say, well, what's meditation? And they say, well, you, you know, you sit there and, and hmm. you, you know, maybe focus on your breathing and not your thoughts and, and, and kind of recognize your thoughts, but let them drift away. And you're like, well, that's it. Yeah. Like, Talk about, yeah, yeah. Going uh, slow to go fast. Right. right. I and, mean, geez. Yeah. And how many of us have ever tried that and thought, man, I'm so unproductive or I don't know how to do this. And so I'm just going to bag it. Right. Like we're so quick to toss away things that have either clinically proven to be valuable or anecdotally right. uh, ha- have been proven to be valuable, and we just toss them away for this this whole what I would call the productivity fallacy. Yeah. It's the idea that we constantly have to consume or do or something. We've we've got to be moving, otherwise we're on this you know treadmill moving backwards. So yeah, slow is fast. I like that. Yeah. So I'd probably say the same thing to, to myself. Yeah, back well, then. Good advice, yeah. Uh, you know, future or past. Uh, there we go. Past him. There we go. Uh, yes. So I don't know. What do you What do you think? Maybe closing Closing thought. Thoroughly enjoy the conversation, but yeah, if you're going to kind of like bring it full circle, what 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 do you think? Yeah, I think that's a good point to end on because it applies everywhere. It applies in our personal lives. It applies in our current jobs. If we If we're a business owner, it applies as business owners. It's this idea to just remember that slow is fast, not slow motion, slow action. It's just taking that time to be more careful and being more intentional and, you know, participate in more meaningful activities that will get you to wherever you're going on this journey. And again, where you think you're going, you may, you may be totally surprised. If you would have told me two years ago that uh, I'd be, Sitting here with you talking about a podcast and uh, or that you even host a podcast. Yeah, come on, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like no way. I would have never predicted that. I would be the furthest thing from my mind. But you know what? That whole trip to get here has been wonderful, and I, you know, I wake up uh, each day just kind of like excited about what might come. But I think part of that is because I've been able to manage a little bit of that that slowness aspect to it, or patience, maybe. Yeah, has a better word for it, but I think that can apply every everywhere and in and in different you know machinations for for each person. But absolutely. How, what about you? I mean, what what do you sort of take away from these discussions? And and again, almost summarizing, this is a lot of what we did in Leadership Academy, it right? Is. And exactly and it translates to the work life so well, but but a little bit you know differently than you know skills and uh, technical understanding. You know that that we tend to be more focused on. I mean, what, what is kind of a broader message that you, you have from. from Yeah. I I think again, the, the slow, slow is fast thing. I mean, man, spot on again. And if you're going to think about something like I need to think about like literally right now in my life. Yeah. That's, that's, that's some gold right there, you know, but I I'd say it's, it's, yeah. Just thinking about the fact that we're all, we're all just people, Mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, I know it's, it's the intro to your podcast, but again, because I've listened to it on this quarterly basis, I'm like, is that, is that your, is that one of your kids, by the way? Yeah, it's my daughter. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's a Steve Jobs quote. Uh Um, Maybe you've heard that before. I have. And so I'm like, that was brilliant, you know, bringing, bringing her on to do it. And I love listening to it. It's just great reminder 
great delivery. You've, maybe you've got a future aspiring actress there too. I don't she know. She could be. Yeah. Uh, she got nervous in front of a mic with no one around. So uh-huh, I don't know if uh-huh. how, uh, well, how she'll okay. Be. So we both had the, like our, our kids on our podcast, I guess, cause I did that. They were much younger at the time and like, they had lots and lots of things to say, but then you put the microphone in front of them and they were like, right. I, I have no interest in this dad. Yeah. Like I'm done. But I, I think that that's it is, is we are all just people and you know, we are all on this, again, to use the journey thing together. And I mean, if we're going to be honest with each other, we're all kind of struggling at times. We have wins at times. We have, you know, challenges at times. Mm -hmm. I think the more that we're vulnerable, the more that we're open, the more that we're saying, Hey, you know, let's, let's create, be creative together. I I think the more you can enjoy that, enjoy that journey. So. Amen. All right, man. Well, um, I think that's, I think we've, we've covered a lot of ground. Like you said, I think we, we probably should go grab some lunch. What yes, do you think? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm all for that. Let's do it. So what'd you think? Let us know by leaving us a comment on the short behind the scenes video from the interview on our YouTube channel. It would be really great if you'd also share your journey and any advice you have for fellow travelers. You can find a link to the video and learn more about Tim in the show notes of this episode, which are available at bkd.com slash simply tags. You can find me out on Twitter where I tweet about tax at Damian Martin CPA. On Instagram where I post about my life at the intersection of tax and being a dad on Tax Dad. On YouTube by subscribing to our Simply Tax YouTube channel and on LinkedIn. I'm Damian Martin and thank you for listening. The information contained in this episode of Simply Tax is based on data available as of the date of its release. BKD is under no obligation to update this information if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances. Any information provided is not to be considered as tax, legal, or financial advice. Please consult your tax advisor before acting on any matters covered.